Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know. Like subscribe and share with your fellow denarian friends. To help support our channel we now accept tips using the blockchain based Brave browser and BAT tokens. It makes a huge difference and is very much appreciated. To those of you that made a contribution, I thank you. If you are interested in making a few extra bucks by using the latest technology, use the blockchain-based Secure Brave browser, the link is in the description below. You can be earning cryptocurrency as you surf the internet as you normally do. Ad blockers are in place to prevent all those unwanted bothersome ads as well as your internet speed will increase significantly. I highly recommend it, as it is the only browser I will use on my desktop and my phone. It was made by the same programmer that made the Firefox browser and is super secure and as I stated earlier, based on the new blockchain technology of today. Did I mention they pay you, the user? First article of interest for today. Al Hikma, a law we is heading to announce a technocratic government that includes well-known political figures. Random General Authority of Wisdom, Rahim al Abudi, revealed Friday. The Prime Minister designate Mohammed Tafiq Alawi's quest to form an independent government government away from the quota system, calling on the blocs to support Alawi in preparation for the early elections. al Abudi said in a televised statement, followed by al Akbaria, that the Prime Minister designate Mohammed Tafiq Alawi is seeking during the next few days to form an independent government far from the quota system. He added that all political blocs are required to support the Alawidan government to put in place any conditions and obstacles in preparation for the early elections. He continued, Alawi is heading to announce a government of technocrats that includes political figures, noting that the political process is threatened in the event that the political blocs put obstacles to the Alawi government. Next article of interest. Alka Ali D reveals that Alawi is ready to present his cabinet to Parliament. Member of Parliament and head of the Bayrak Al Air Bloc, Mohammed Al Khaldi, confirmed that Prime Minister designate Mohammed Tafiq Alawi has completed his cabinet, and he is ready to present it to Parliament to gain confidence. Alka Ali D said in a statement to Al Shark Al Asset newspaper, which was followed by the Independent that the government has completed and is ready to vote from tomorrow, Sunday, if a parliamentary session was held. Alka Alidi added that the current conflict is not a conflict between components, but between parties that want to dominate the political scene without being concerned about all the sacrifices made by the Iraqis through the demonstrations that have continued for more than four months. On the mechanism by which the ministers were chosen, Alka Alidi says that Alawi met with about 100 personalities of various spectrums, components and orientations, and he chose 22 ministers from them, except for some ministries, who are given more than one option or alternative in case the minister did not go before parliament, stressing that Alawi did not see any of his close associates to any of the names he chose to fill ministerial positions and on whether the government includes all political forces, especially that it is a transitional government and its mission is to hold early elections. Kaalidi says that the current government team is locked in a struggle with the parties and not the components, as all Iraqi ethnic, religious, and sectarian components in the government have been satisfied, but it has not given any opportunity to the parties and therefore the many representatives of these parties are attacking Alawi because he has blocked the way to their continued influence. And on the possibility of holding a parliamentary session this week in light of the continuing conflict between Alawi and many political forces and blocs, Kaalidi says that Alawi had completed his cabinet cabinet within 12 days and had already requested a session of parliament, but there are parties that do not want to hold such a session because they are they represent components while they are actually representing parties and components while the prime minister designate gave the right to the components, but he could not satisfy all parties. However, we requested that next Tuesday be the maximum for a session to gain confidence. Next article of interest. Central banks are in digital currency in 2020. This is what they're paying attention to. 
starting with the Bank of China's announcement that it would be exploring the potential of a state-sponsored digital currency and continuing into the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland that produced guidance for central banks navigate the digital landscape. 2020 is increasingly looking like the year governments take real steps into the world of cryptocurrency. There are a variety of factors behind this push. China's interest, for instance, is more a consequence of being able to exercise control over its monetary policies in the face of challenges from actual cryptocurrencies. Then, there are the initiatives among the central banks of Sweden, England, Japan, Canada, Switzerland and the European Central Bank, which have fostered a committee to review the potential outcomes and consequences of a central bank digital currency, CBDC. A coin for all seasons. While none of the proposed CBDC frameworks are cryptocurrencies since they are all so far formulated to reflect the value one or more fiat note, the central banks are looking at established and emerging cryptos and stable coins for cues on how their currency may fit into the larger digital ecosystem. One of the main aspects of a digital central bank token is the disintermediation of liquidity and financing between the bank, currency issuers and even individuals. The World Economic Forum's Central Bank Digital Currency Policy Maker Toolkit outlines the potential wholesale, retail or hybrid model of such a currency, particularly for international exchange or transactions. Presciently, Governor of the Bank of England Mark Carney hinted at this utility in August of 2019, while speaking at the Fed's Economic Policy Symposium in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. There Carney explained that a central bank-supported digital currency could replace the dollar as the global hedge currency. The high degree of fungibility in this currency, as well as the direct control it provides to the central bank that governs it makes the currency far more nimble than paper notes, though the centrality of those controls poses other sources of risk in the form of operational pitfalls or cybersecurity threats. What does this mean for cryptocurrencies? How this might affect the broader cryptocurrency market is unclear at the moment. However, it does further shape the discussion over the character of digital currency, and that has already shifted dramatically with the announcement and continued troubles of Libra, backed by Facebook, Inc., Nasdaq, FB, and a dwindling array of leaders in the online and digital technology worlds. Given the seeming eventuality of private sector digital currencies and the decline of cash, real work toward digitization from central banks could serve to highlight the benefits of true cryptocurrencies, particularly in the shortcoming of centralized digital assets. In an analysis of the aforementioned WEF white paper, financial services firm ING issued commentary that outlined one of the problems of a CBDC namely the risk of transaction verification and double spending, whereas with Bitcoin the solution to this problem is achieved by reaching consensus across the validating nodes in the network, the article explains. With CBDC, validation could be done by the central bank itself, although the caveat is an increased risk of cyber threats because of the higher centralization of the governance mechanism. Cryptocurrencies like Libra or Bitcoin and most other cryptocurrencies, wouldn't face cyber threats to the same degree as a CBDC because they aren't regulated by the bank and work based on a decentralized payment network that is powered by its users. So while a CDBC could make current cryptocurrencies obsolete, the conversations around their path to existence seem to stand it speculative. Next article of interest. U.S. intelligence officials are funding research on dollar-crushing black swan events. The U.S. Office of the Director of National Intelligence, ODNI, wants to sponsor a postdoctoral researcher to study what would happen if the U.S. dollar lost its status as the world's reserve currency. In a job listing posted late last year, the agency called for applicants from the U.S. who have a background in economics. The deadline to apply is February 28. The agency said the research, the first of its kind for the intelligence community's postdoc program, could help the U.S. prepare for black swan events that would threaten the dominance of the dollar. This type of unpredictable event is beyond what is normally expected of a situation and has potentially severe consequences.
This particular study falls under the purview of the National Counterproliferation Center, an ODNI unit that looks for ways to combat the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, in part by preventing terrorist financing. According to intelligence officials familiar with the matter, the research would be shared broadly within the intelligence community. While officials wouldn't attribute the study's initiation to any one event or trend, the postdoc researcher listing does cite predictions from cryptocurrency enthusiasts that a global cryptocurrency or national digital currency could undermine the US dollar, and mentions the growing economies of China and India. If either of these scenarios or others come to pass, the U.S. would lose both its status in the world and its global authorities, the agency wrote in the listing. The U.S. should prepare to identify potential black swan events that could revolutionize the financial playing field in ways we do not yet understand, presenting strategic surprise and understand root causes and driving factors that are particularly sensitive to certain global or technical events. The postdoc program starts at the beginning of the next fiscal year on October 1st and runs for two years. The research is unclassified and the researcher doesn't receive any special clearances, but researchers will receive ODNI sponsorship, funding and access to it including advanced computing, the official said. The agency also wouldn't control the researcher's work but would check in periodically to make sure the agency understands it. ODNI said it can also connect the researcher with experts at ODNI and other government entities, like the Federal Reserve, but will not provide data or information that is not already publicly available. The agency is looking for a researcher who will apply statistics, artificial intelligence and deep learning to historical black swan events and possible future scenarios. The listing suggests the researcher might then look for what the most likely scenarios are and in what time arrange they could unfold. Hit the like and subscribe button to be alerted as more articles of interest are posted. Be sure to visit my Denarian blog. Also check out my Facebook or Twitter for all of today's articles of interest as I post them on those platforms as well. Pick up your free trial copy of the newly upgraded currency exchange planner before you leave. Use the promo code, the Denarian, and get 25% off at checkout when you decide to unleash the full planner's abilities, along with the mobile application added free for being my subscriber. Register today as an affiliate with the Gold Savings Carrot Bar program. If you do not keep your savings in a real asset like gold, you risk everything as the fiat system fails and they boot up the new quantum financial system on the blockchain. Protect your family's wealth today in physical gold, as tomorrow may be too late. The program is made so everyone can afford to save in gold, by offering it one gram at a time. Start saving in a real true asset like gold, it's free to register and secure your family's savings tomorrow. Why do you think all the central banks are loading up on gold lately, and running from the current depreciating fiat US dollar? Do you think they do not know what is coming? Get yourself protected. Both of the links to these invaluable programs are available in the description box below this video. Go check them out. Knowledge is power. Using that newfound knowledge is powerful. Over and out, for now, the Denarian.